Wouldn't it be good if we could see people's hearts? We could sort of tell up front. We, we could manage our risk a whole lot better, couldn't we? If, if we could tell up front who was going to take advantage of us and who was going to be appreciative of our service. If we could tell the difference between the denier who would be restored later and the betrayer who wouldn't. You see, leading as followers of Jesus not only means that we must get personal with Him and with others, that we must get real about ourselves, it also means that we must assume the risks of the mission. Leading as followers means that we too must assume the risks of the mission. We must follow in His way. We must lead as He led. We must serve as He served. In Luke's Gospel, Jesus put it this way, If anyone would come after Me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow Me. In John's Gospel, he puts it a bit differently. Turn back with me, if you would, to chapter 12 and look at verse 24. Truly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, He must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Jesus told Simon Peter, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. That anticipates, doesn't it, chapter 14, where he says, I go to prepare a place for you. If you were to be with me, you must follow me must follow in my way. We must assume the risk, the risks of the mission. The full extent of Jesus' love was to love the denier, Peter. To love the denier, Greg. To love the denier, John and Bob and Jim and Dennis. But it was also to love Judas. To show him what love is like even though he would refuse it. Even though he would betray it. You know, that's the nature of Jesus' question to Peter, isn't it? At the end of John's Gospel. Peter was there. He saw the full extent of Jesus' love in the basin and the towel. And as He denied Him before Jesus' trial, three times. And so three times, what is the question for Peter and for us? Do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Do you understand what love is? Did you... Get the shock treatment of the living parable. That it's not about your greatness or my greatness. It's not about being on the right hand or on the left. But to lead as followers of Jesus, it is to walk the way that He walked. To live the way that He lived. To love the way that He loved. Which means... We can't tell the difference between the denier... And the betrayer. We don't know hearts like Jesus knew hearts. We don't even know our own hearts that well. So what is it for you and for me? I know for me, um, I'm like most Presbyterians. Risk averse. We don't do the risk taking very well. And when I moved to St. Louis to come on faculty here at Covenant Seminary, I was very focused, as I should have been, on getting my family settled, on making sure that 
we got settled into our home. We found the right home for us. Um, it was very sort of inwardly focused, which is appropriate for a season. But isn't it true that it's so easy to stay there? So easy to stay in that place of focusing on caring for ourselves and for our families. That sometimes it takes the shock value of a living parable to remind us to look up and to remember the mission that as Jesus was sent into the world, so send I you. For me, it was Hurricane Katrina. We had been here only a couple of years and I didn't realize how sort of settled and self-protective I was until the storm hit on August 30th. You see, for me, it was very personal because my brother is a Baptist minister in New Orleans. I could not remain at a safe distance anymore. I couldn't stay in my protective bubble and keep my good clothes on and not get involved. And so for me, that was the shock value. That was the living parable. We took a number of students down from Covenant and some students from Missouri Baptist University and some uh, wonderful people from Grace Presbyterian Church of St. Charles. And in one week's time, we were involved in nine different houses not some in nicer parts of New Orleans, some in really, really down and out parts of New Orleans. But you see, it wasn't just about sort of us getting involved with them. It was us getting involved because Jesus had got involved with us. Leading as followers, we must get involved with Him, get personal with Him and with others. We must also get real about ourselves, our need for cleansing. And we must also assume the risks of the mission. We must love the way that He loved. 